Do you ever feel like you need to wrap yourself in bubble tape every time you go out on your bike? Are you afraid of cars? Are you afraid of the road? Are you afraid you might die every time you ride your bike? Well, you're not alone. Hi, I'm retired professional triathlete TJ Tollickson, CEO of Diamond Bikes, and today we're going to give you all the tips you need to ditch the bubble wrap and ride safe. Let's ride. Uh, so let's talk about safety on the bike today. So it is real. Thousands of people die every year riding their bike on the road and it's real and it touches every one of us. Uh, I was particularly touched most recently. One of our very fondest diamond riders, uh, Andy Potts racing coach, Brian Cazera was recently hit while riding his diamond and died. And so there is nobody who rides a bike that, that bike safety doesn't impact. And so this is real talk and we'll get right to it because keeping yourself safe is super important. And we all love riding bikes, which is why we do it. And nobody likes to ride bikes in fear. So we're gonna cover tips to help make you more confident and feel safe when you're out riding on the roads. Uh, so the number one thing, you saw me with it on uh, first, but helmet, it's obviously the, the most simple thing, but wear a helmet when you ride your bike. You should wear a helmet, FYI. I had the unfortunate uh, coincidence of cracking two helmets within six months. And both of those times I realized that if I was not wearing the helmet, it would have been my head. Uh, and so do yourself a favor, wear a helmet. Make sure it's CPSC certified. Uh, that's the Consumer Product Safety Commission in America. Uh, there's also a really great technology now called MIPS, which is rotational impact. Uh, so you can look for a MIPS helmet for added protection. Uh, the CPSC recommends you replace your bike helmet every five to 10 years. Giro and Bell uh, actually recommend you replace three to five years. Um, so uh, we're still in that category, but you remember that the point of having a helmet is protect you and it is mostly foam and so it will eventually fail and not do as good a job as protecting you. So make sure you have a new one. <coughs> I can't breathe in this thing. Uh, next thing, check your equipment before you ride. This is a really big one. Uh, you should check to make sure that your brakes work. Uh, you should check to make sure that your shifting works and you should check to make sure that your tires are properly inf inflated. Yes, I am psycho. Yes, I inflate my bike tires before every time I ride my bike. I like to know what the PSI is and I wanna make sure that tires are holding air. Um, it will help you a lot. Uh, the next one is wear reflective clothing or bright clothing when you're riding. Um, try to be seen. Uh, I know it can be really cool to just dress in all black and have a black bike and no lights and ride at night and be Batman. Uh, but uh, even Batman wants to stay alive. You mean precisely, Robin? Uh, the next thing is know the hand signals, okay? We're gonna talk briefly about the hand signals. So it used to be you always kept your right hand on the bike and if you wanted to turn right, this was a right hand turn and this was a left hand turn. Okay, and this is slowing down, right? Okay, well, let's just be honest, those are kind of outdated and so the new kind of rules of the road or if you want to turn right, put your left hand on the bar and point to the right with your right hand because everybody sees that's what you're doing. And I get that that people behind you uh, to this side want to see what you're doing, but the simple point to the direction you're going is very easy for people to know that you're going to make a right turn. Uh, okay, now if you're all the way on the right side of the road when you're making a right turn, one, you're not setting yourself up for a great turn, but also you're not doing yourself any favors with your visibility. So before you make a left or right hand turn, you want to move to the left of the lane, at least the center of the lane, and point to the right uh, so you can turn. If you want to go old school and put your hand up like this, go ahead, that's fine. Uh, but I'm just saying it's now very accepted among cyclists to point where you want to turn and go. Left turn is still this, point this way, stick your hand out. You can make a point like this because a lot of people understand that that means I want to go here and they will not mistake it that you're asking for a high five. And slowing down can be the same thing. You can just put your hand out to the side and you can do it to either side um, to say that you're slowing down. Ride as if you're a car. It's a really big one. Um, one of the things I hate is seeing people ride on the wrong side of the road. Um, do not ride your bike on the wrong side of the road at traffic. Okay, don't do it. 
uh, ride with the traffic. Behave like a car. Yes, that means stopping at stop signs, stopping at stoplights. Be predictable because cars, if you're in the road, cars are expecting you to behave like a car. And if you don't behave like a car, you're more likely to get hit and injured on your bike. Uh, railroad tracks, this is a big one and behaving like cars, okay? So when you cross railroad tracks, this is a big one because sometimes this is where you have to diverge from acting exactly like a car. When you cross railroad tracks on your bike, you wanna cross them at 90 degrees. So if the railroad tracks run this way, you wanna cross them like this. You do not wanna cross train tracks at the angle like that because you can get your tires stuck in the train tracks and then go over. It's ironic because the shootout in Tucson meets, there's trolley tracks that run right through there and several times every year somebody goes down hard getting caught in the trolley tracks if you're riding over 10 miles per hour and I say 10 miles per hour because that's a good running pace it's a six minute mile but if you're riding over 10 miles per hour stay off the sidewalk why sidewalk seems way safer well it may seem safer and if you're riding under 10 miles per hour and I'll use this as an example I ride with my kids to school every morning down Grand Avenue on the sidewalk okay it's way too much traffic I would not feel safe with my kids but we're also riding slower than 10 miles an hour if you were running an eight minute mile you would pass us on the way to school but the sidewalk is actually dangerous so each one of those plates of sidewalk uh, is like a giant cobblestone right so there can be big gaps and bumps that you have to try to avoid along with other people dogs people walking dogs people walking it's safer to be in the road and the other big thing why it's safer to be in the road is cars are not looking for bikes traveling very fast as they cross driveways and intersections okay they're just not simply expecting someone to fly 20 miles per hour on a sidewalk on their bike um, the next one here is use the bike lanes if you're on a road that has a bike lane don't be that a-hole who is riding in the middle of the road when there is a bike lane if there's a bike lane and you're not needing to turn left or something use the bike lane If I ride in the bike lane, all I'm gonna do is get flat tires. Well, that may be true too, because people like to break glass bottles in bike lanes because they hate cyclists and the extra 30 second delay you caused in their day. Uh, but use the bike lane. It's the safest place on the road for you to ride. Uh, the next one, technology. Technology is your friend when it comes to safety. We have technology. The most important thing you can carry every time you ride your bike is your cell phone. If you have your cell phone with you, it is an emergency lifeline in any strange safety circumstance. No matter what you can picture up, having a cell phone can help you. It tracks your location, and so it knows where you've been and where you're going. Um, so the next biggest thing to carry on you is an ID. Uh, the next one uh, with technology, uh, radars, lights, and cameras. So these things are all super cool devices. Radars go on the back of your bike, Garmin makes one. It alerts you on your Garmin computer when a car is coming and how fast they are approaching. Super useful to have so you know when someone is coming behind you. I use a Cyclic computer. Uh, the Cyclic computer also is a continuous video loop and high definition behind you. Side note there, I actually have been hit from behind. I was in Kansas in 2004, was hit by an RV from behind. Uh, it was pretty brutal. I thought I was gonna die. That's one of the times I cracked a helmet. Um, super scary incident. It would have been nice to have a camera at that time to actually see that footage to see what happened. So that's a really cool thing. Lights, headlights, tail lights, flashing lights. The assortment of lights right now is amazing. You should have a light because if you're gonna ride in the dark anywhere, and sometimes the dark just means on a trail that's covered, having a light increases your chance of people seeing you, even in broad daylight. The flat kit, we talked about that, but the flat kit is a huge part of your safety as well. Um, and so now a lot of these frames have integrated storage in, in them. Uh, the Diamond Triathlon bikes have an integrated storage compartment for your flat kit. It's super convenient to have it. It's awesome technology because you can repair a flat, repair a tubeless, have the tools you need to get back up and riding, and that makes your bike ride a lot safer. 
Uh, the next one is to ride with someone else, okay? One person is great, and I realize that a lot of us don't have the privilege. I would say way more than 50% of my riding as a professional triathlete was so alone. That's the most dangerous time when you're on a bike. If you are riding with just one other person, so there's two of you, that more than doubles your visibility to people. And it's really simple. You can imagine, we all drive cars too, so you can imagine what it's like if you saw one raccoon run across the road. Okay, your chances of missing that raccoon are seeing it too late. But if there's two raccoons, the chances that you see them goes up dramatically. And so it's the same thing with riding your bike. The more people that are present, the easier you are to spot, and the more respect typically you get on the road. Um, the last big, piece of advice that I have is don't forget to use your voice, okay? So sometimes as cyclists, uh, because we don't have a horn to honk or whatever, you basically become mute in situations and sometimes you're in a kind of a panicky situation and you forget you don't have a horn that you could slam on to alert somebody, you must use your voice, okay? And so what is that? So it can just be a, ah! If you yell loud enough, despite how loud the music is in their car, if they have headphones on or whatever, they will hear you. Uh, and so that is a huge safety tip for staying aware on the road and having people be aware of you. So if they're not paying attention, you're about to get hit, the last thing you can do, you don't have a horn, use your voice, be heard. Those are my safety tips for riding your bike. I hope you learned something today. I hope you get out on your bike, enjoy it safely, and Keep turning those cranks. We got an extra special bumper today at the end of this video. This channel just hit 1,000 subscribers. So thank you to everybody who has subscribed. If you haven't, hit that subscribe button because hey, 1,000 people can't be wrong, right? Or maybe they can. Uh, but 1,000 people certainly have subscribed to this. You could be 1,001. Uh, so hit that subscribe button and check out all our weekly content.